Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and thy neighbor as thyself. This do and thou shalt live. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. Dear faithful, today we read in this uh, Mass uh, the uh, Gospel of a good Samaritan who showed mercy to his neighbor. Today we also uh, celebrate the feast of St. Cajetan, a great uh, reformer in the 16th century of priestly life. My favorite story about St. Cajetan is how uh, he, because he always kept such strict custody of eyes, uh, nobody ever could uh, notice or see what color his eyes were. Many of the people, especially the high society ladies in Italy, did their utmost that they could pursue or trick him to lock up and so that they could see his eyes. But nobody never managed to trick him. So strictly he practiced humility uh, and uh, meekness and get strict custody of their eyes that he has become one of the greatest reformers of holy priesthood of all time. And the gospel of today brings us a great consolation in this uh, terror, fear, and uh, sin-filled world. There will be never uh, no peace in the uh, world. There will always be dissensions, hostilities, wars, and all kinds of evil acts. And uh, we Christians, we Catholics, we should always remember that we are not meant for uh, this world but still the evil happenings might sometimes cause us concern or worries. What will happen to us? What will happen to our children when the time goes by and we see again and again new wars and acts of terrorism going on? The Gospel of today, we find a young man, a lawyer, who wants to ask from our Lord, what then is most important thing in the, to, uh, uh, there is. And we should learn from today's gospel that no laws or, or authority or state or leader can ever guarantee in stopping fear and uncertainty in the world. The context of today's uh, gospel uh, is uh, this. The disciples, uh, the followers of Jesus, they had just, they had just been exulting over the great tri- triumphs which they have witnessed during their career. Their preaching had converted many people. They had uh, power over serpents and scorpions, and even the demons were subject to them. So they had kind of a reason to pat themselves on the back and to show their master Jesus how good and well uh, work had been done. But Jesus, uh, in today's uh, gospel, uh, uh, wanted to give uh, the apostles the true reasons to rejoice. And uh, a Christian should always rejoice only in his Lord and in his salvation, a uh, Christian should never either rejoice uh, uh, over abundantly or carry a sorrow over the happenings uh, of uh, this life, exactly because we are not meant or created for this life. But our Lord want to ma- wanted to make apostles to rejoice uh, for the reason that their names were written in the book of life, to the book which gives them everlasting life in heaven and not just swell or smooth life uh, here on earth, which will at one point uh, infallibly disappear. When uh, when what this lawyer uh, was hearing Jesus talking in this way, uh, he went to our Lord and asked, well then, what must he do to attain the eternal life? And Jesus asked, what then was written in the uh, law of God? And the lawyer replied by repeating the commandment we just heard. Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thy whole heart and thy neighbor as thyself. And uh, and Jesus answered that uh, you have answered correctly. 
uh, do this and uh, you shall live. And uh, the one, he wanted to show to this lawyer who then, were, uh, or lawyer rather, wanted to ask that who then was his neighbor, who is this uh, man, or who is the persons uh, and men who I must uh, show uh, this love and uh, charity. And to answer him, our Lord told this uh, great parable of the good Samaritan. And uh, this, uh, the reason he told this uh, parable was not only that he wanted to show that every man is my neighbor, but also that we cannot be saved without loving our neighbor. As he said, the, the, this do and thou shalt live. And it's good, uh, uh, even though we know this uh, gospel and this parable very well, it gives us very important this lesson, which we often do not think about it. We, of course, know that we must show love and humility to God, obey his commandments, and uh, confess our sins if we ever want to go to heaven. But we must learn today that also that we cannot be saved if we fail to show love and charity to our neighbor. We owe love to ourselves. We want to be saved, as said, and we want to go to heaven. But to, uh, to make this true, we must also love our neighbor uh, for the sake and, uh, of uh, same, for the sake of same motives as ourselves. Therefore, namely, we must love him sincerely. And uh, most of all, we must love our neighbor supernaturally. We don't treat him well because we want to be treated in the same way back, but we treat him well because we wish him all the well he could get, as we wish all the good for ourselves as uh, well. And uh, you can also learn from today that you are entitled to love yourself as well, and you even should love yourself in this life as well. This is not mistaken for selfishness, which means the love of ourselves to the exclusion of love of God and our neighbor. Selfishness is to love yourself over and above all things. But when you love God more than anything else, and also more than yourself, you want to distribute God and his love to as many people as possible. Uh, if you don't wish good to yourself, how could, should you, how could you hope it to your neighbor? Therefore, we must always stay away from mortal sin and also to warn others to stay away from that as well. In the gospel, the good man who showed mercy uh, to his neighbor was a Samaritan. And we, in order to get over our own prejudices, we must always see every man who uh, we meet as one of the creations uh, of God. And mankind has had a long, uh, long uh, centuries uh, to learn and uh, learn to know this uh, rule of God. Last month, uh, only uh, about uh, three weeks ago, uh, there was a certain procession uh, in Quincy, Illinois, where the people celebrated a priest uh, who was one of the firsts uh, in his uh, own time. Uh, he was, his name was Father Augustus uh, Tolton, and uh, in the, the procession was uh, arranged to mark the anniversary of exactly 130 years after his celebrated homecoming as a priest. And there was, in that time's America, something very peculiar uh, about that uh, new priest, because he was a black man. He had come uh, to the Illinois, his uh, home state, uh, so that he now, as a newly ordained priest, could give salvation to other people, which he himself so uh, earnestly wanted uh, to attain. And all the people uh, loved him because of his preaching and because uh, of uh, his uh, singing, and most of all, because of his charity. There was no better way 
to take away men's prejudice than by sending a priest amongst uh, among uh, them. And uh, this priest uh, had uh, was originally uh, from Missouri, which uh, uh, until civil war was a slave state, and they had escaped to the free state of uh, Illinois. And he had to face through lots of prejudices, even on his road uh, to priesthood. But he encountered uh, all the uncharitableness which even <coughs> Catholics showed to uh, him uh, with uh, quietness, with humility, and with great love. And every Christian uh, back then and even now should uh, learn and, uh, and keep in mind the parable of uh, today that if we want to get saved, we must love our neighbor and we must sh- show charity uh, to him. Uh, there is no mightier power uh, to uh, to spread uh, goodness and welfare of society than follow the rules uh, and ordinances of the uh, gospel. Uh, it said uh, among his parishioners that Father Tolton's willingness to endure the suffering in union with Christ was a great example to everybody. And during these uh, tumultuous times, uh, when we think all the troubles and difficulties in our so- society, we should uh, get back to basics and remember what is the true solution to the, all the problems of the world. And that is written in today's uh, gospel. We, we must live our lives uh, quietly, humbly, and with great love uh, to our neighbor. There is never room for any prejudice or uh, fears uh, or, uh, or prejudices against the race in the Catholic uh, Church. And the, uh, the true problem, both for society and for racial questions, always has been and will remain the spirit of the gospel. Pope Leo XIII uh, said once that the thought of one race as inferior to another is perversity because all men share the original brotherhood of race and all have the same human dignity and the likeness of God stamped upon them. And in the case of this black priest, there was a black man who had escaped, uh, who was an escaped slave, and now he was bringing God from heaven to save all people, both black and white, and all the races he encountered. So the spirit of gospel is against the spirit of the world, but spirit of gospel also is destined to triumph over the world. In these times, keep your dear faithful that in mind, that no matter how tumultuous all the society, all the political talks, no matter how great and passionate they come, we never have anything to fear, because our Lord he himself has given us all the answers we need. And also, especially for our young people, I want to say that, <clears throat> say that never look for salvation uh, and, and making things uh, uh, good again from uh, in anything except from the Catholic faith. World is permanently stained by mortal sin. This is unfortunate, but a clear fact for a Christian. But it is Christ, uh, the true victor, the true God, and the true suffering and chari- charitable Savior, who has also brought us uh, a redemption and victory from sin and from the death. God bless you. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.